tonight. We understand that life happens and things.
when you are facing trials and you face tribulation, it's great to be able to call on your sisters and your brothers. But there are some things that you have to handle with you and God. And so I want to encourage you tonight to decree over your life that there is nothing that shall separate you from your worship. There is nothing that will take your praise. There is nothing that will keep you out of the presence of God. No hard place, no financial struggles, no sicknesses, no diseases. There is nothing, no depression. There is nothing strong enough. And if we're moving, but I want to encourage you tonight to make that thing personal. And it's easy to say that when everything is going good. It gets real different when it gets into that hard place. But I want you to remember the next time you face your hard place that there is nothing strong enough. There is nothing the enemy can throw at you strong enough to take your worship, to take your praise, to keep you out of the presence of God. There is nothing.
together for all the guests, all the visitors. If you've been here for the first time, I hope that you feel welcome. But we have somebody in the house who can welcome you better than I can. And also giving it up for our ministers on tonight. We can't do this without you guys. We want to hear the sound from heaven. And that can come from you guys. Amen. Our very own assistant pastor tonight will come up at this time to welcome you. Put your hands together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Okay, wait, this time right here sounds a lot better. Let me try this side over here because they ain't paying no attention to it. Let me try this again. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Okay, well, they're trying to be in competition. Let me try back over here because there's something about like you being over here. They want to get loud. Let's try this again because, see, I'm saying, saying they're standing up. See, see, they're doing a lot more. Let's try this again. Praise the Lord, everybody.
up to see about him. I got the phone call. And I, for some reason, I just couldn't pray. But I believe that, that God was letting me know that everything was all right. This young man came into the shed in on Friday when he really needed to go to work, but he felt like he had to be in the house of the Lord. And I prayed in the house, and, 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 and two men of God was led to pray over him. We ought to give God praises for that. Not just for ordinary praise, but that's what you call a praise in the year.
been in one of those kind of car accidents before. And my car flipped over I-95 five times and landed on the other side now. The driver's side was crushed.
said they bless God. I want to thank God. Hey, Amen. Let's first of all, let's honor a deposit of this house. Praise God.
with everything in me, praise God. Amen. I'm happy. gospel and she is a an accurate prophet praise God and she is coming I wasn't gonna say it but I want I want I want to testify to to her not only being my wife integrity today she wanted to she wanted to be able to just sit before the Lord and get before God. I tried to get her. I said, listen, stay at the house. I'll be okay. I had some pains that I need to go get checked out. Got my first IV today in my entire life. at 16 years old. Then I took my IV virginity. <laughs> Now, Pastor, I had an IV in all my life, and they put an IV in my arm today. Think I was upset. I walked in, the lady said, well, what is it? Abdominal pain, you automatically get an IV. I looked at that lady, boy, I wanted to walk out, but it was her. She wasn't going to let me walk out, because I would have left. I would, but I would have found out some things that I needed to find out. Praise God. And, and, and she said, no, I can get a word from the Lord, but my first ministry is to my husband. So, I know she's anointed tonight, praise God. I love this for you. I love this for you. <laughs> so, I know, listen, I'm telling you that because I know she's anointed. I know that there's a word from y'all. She sacrificed that time to make sure I was okay. There is a word. So I will introduce to some and present to others. Amen. My wife, Bishop Marlon S. Wright. up in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Truly, I give God the glory and the honor for being here on tonight. Again, I know we have honored Apostle, but come on, can we just honor him one more time? Thank you so much. I'm going to take it for granted that my name was said in the wind that God favored me to be here in your house. So thank you, Apostle. I thank God for my husband, my man of God. so easy to just go on and preach. But can we thank God for my man of God, amen, as well. My mom, my lovely mom, to the Lifeline Georgia family, life at the point of Angela's four conferences, Dr. Russell, Dr. Tiffany, and to all my spiritual supporters in Miami, I see you out there in your women's ministry shirt. Sis, I see you. Hallelujah. We came to deal with some things, but we want you to know, sis, I see can you just testify to another sister? Y'all gonna have to move a little bit. I understand it's a little late. But the Bible says that when we're in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And so therefore, you don't mind just loving on somebody. Will you just give another sister a hug and give them a love? In fact, just go ahead and take out your phone and grab a good selfie and tell them, say, sis, I see you. And we're gonna deal with some things for tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, grab your phone. Hallelujah, we're going to build a sisterhood. Come on, grab your phone. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the glory of God. Thank you, husband, to the praise team. Amen. Evangelist Murka, Evangelist Katrina, Pastor Zamaj, amen. Pastor Mark is jumping on in there. Thank y'all for setting the atmosphere. Did you get a selfie with somebody? Some of y'all can't even move. Come on, get your selfie, get your selfie. Hallelujah. Kamari, we are so glad to see you. As soon as Apostle began to put that up, I started praying immediately for you. So we just thank God for the purpose and plan, the kingdom mandate that is on your life. 
Hallelujah. There is a word. There is a word. I'm going to do something a little different. And it's just me. Hallelujah. I'm mindful of my time. But can I just get a little bit of give me you? You already know I'm calling you. Come on, Pastor Zena. Come on, sing this with us in the praise team. Come on. Lord, give me you. Give me you. Give me you. Come on, just the whole praise team. Come on, she just jumping and singing it with us. Come on.
this sounds so good. One more time, church family. Is me, oh Lord, I'm on my knees. Come on, come on, one more time before we bring the praise team and musicians back in with us. Come on, one more time. Y'all sound good. in the devil's kingdom. Tell your neighbor, say, it's no longer just sitting in church. It's doing the works of Jesus. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 1. I'm not going to try. I'm going to try not to be before you too long because I know that hour is spent. Thank you, Apostle. I do appreciate you. I'm, I'm a teacher and a prophet. Amen. I tell everybody my husband has that gift. Hallelujah. He is a preacher's preacher. And if God just every now and then dropped that hooping anointing on me, hallelujah. It comes every once in a blue moon. I don't know if it's going to be out tonight, but I'm going to just do what God called me to do. Amen. Amen. If you'll rest on your feet, I'm just going to read. Actually, I want to do some teaching, and that's all right. I know that there are some powerful preachers that will be coming behind me, but I feel my assignment on tonight, Apostle, is to lay a foundation for deal with it, to lay a foundation for what God wants to do in our lives. Can you just lay hands on yourself and say, Father, I'm ready to deal with it. And this time when you say, Father, I'm ready to deal with it, I need you to say what your it is. Come on, somebody, because we don't want to be vague. Everybody know, if you know what you're dealing with, 
you know what it is. So when you say, Father, I'm ready to deal, I want you to say what you're ready to deal with. If it's a bad attitude, if it's unforgiveness, if, if it's grief, if it's rejection, if it's abandonment, whatever it is, tell God, say, God, I'm ready to deal with it and say what the it is. Come on, tell him. Y'all mighty low. That's all right, long as he can hear you. I teach lifeline is that your faith will bring expectation. So what you are expecting to see and expecting to receive and expecting to get from God, that's what God will do in your life. Amen. So are you ready to deal with it? You ready to deal with your it? All right. I'm just going to read the first three verses and then you can rest yourself and I'm going to just flow as the Holy Spirit leads. First Samuel chapter one and verse one says, now there was a certain man of Ramah. Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jehoram, the son of Elhu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zoth, an Ephrathite. And he had two wives, the name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. You can rest yourselves in the presence of God. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word. We know that the entrance of your word gives a light and understanding. We'll hide ourselves, O oh God, in your word, Father, for your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The sum of your word is true, and every one of your righteous decrees endures forever. God, we thank you that every principality, every demon, every cohort, every imp that was on an assignment to try to distract, derail, delay, or hinder, even in this atmosphere, we evict you from the presence of God in the name of Jesus. I need some intercessors to pray right here. We pull down every stronghold, God. Anytime you send a prophet into a region, God, you're not just sending us for a house word, but you're sending us for a nation's word, God. So we pull down every principality, every stronghold, every wicked spirit that would try to come up against the word of God and Father we release the angels to go forth and minister and hearken unto the voice of our spoken word we thank you for giving us access in the name of Jesus into the heavenlies, into the higher places oh God, so that we can speak and decree that that which is in heaven is also down here on earth and we give you the glory, the honor and the praise that it is so, somebody shout in Jesus name, amen so tonight, I want to talk to you about Deal With It. That's the title of the conference. And I'm so thankful that Apostle Heard God and the women's ministry team that we can deal with some things. Ask your sister on this side of you say, are you ready to deal with some things? I'm ready to deal with some things. To deal with some things, we have to understand one thing about what God is doing in our life, and that's that we have a kingdom mandate on our lives to fulfill the purpose and the plan of God on our life. A kingdom mandate means that God has already commissioned us to do a work in this earth. Hear me? Listen, there's a kingdom mandate. Somebody shout, there's a kingdom mandate. God needed you. And because there's a kingdom mandate and God needed you, there may be some times that you deal with warfare. There may be some times that you go through some things that other people didn't go through. But that's all right. Tell your neighbor, say, you're going to survive that because you survived the last thing. So we're going to deal with it. The enemy tries all our lives to put obstacles, stumbling blocks, roadblocks, and all types of distractions in our way to make us feel like we were a victim because you were a teenage mother, or a victim because your father wasn't there, or a victim because your mother abused you, or a victim because you were in foster care. But God already knew who you was. God already knew that there was a kingdom mandate. Somebody shout a kingdom mandate. There was a kingdom on your life and he had already predestined you to do some good works. Can I get you to just talk to your neighbor and shake your neighbor? You don't mind. I know the hour's a little late so I don't want nobody to go to sleep. Amen. And so I may get you to talk to your neighbor a little bit more than usual on tonight. But tell him, say, there's a kingdom mandate on your life. You've got to fulfill your purpose. If I read on in the chapters of the, in 1 Samuel chapter 1 about Hannah 
Hannah and Penina, and most of us are familiar with it, but just a slight backdrop for the sake of time. You know, here we have a woman, and, and she was married to a man, and this man, Hannah, had two wives, Hannah and Penina, and Penina was having all these children, and Hannah could not have any children. And, and every time uh, Penina had a child, she would begin, Bishop, to provoke, or you know, in, in, antagonate, you know, antagonize, you know, um, um, Hannah, because Hannah could not have any kids. Don't worry when your enemies raise up. Your enemies can push you to a destiny that your friends don't even want you to get to. Your friends may become a crutch, but your enemies can push you to a destiny. That's why God said, I'll prepare a table before you're in the presence of your enemies. Y'all talking about your enemies, you run it from your enemies, but tell your neighbor, say, sis, I see you. You will have to learn how to just sit of your enemies. I do have to do some reading because I want to give you three points. I don't want to just preach, but I want to give you some meat to take home because I want you to understand if you're going to deal with your it, then you have to come out with a mindset that I'm winning in this. If you're going to deal with your it, you're going to have to have a mindset that I'm winning in this. I may not be able to change right now. I may not be able to change my past, but what I can do is run to deal with all my kids and I can win it. Can I get some winners? I don't need about about five of y'all to just slap me a high five and say, Bishop, I'm going to win in this thing. I'm, come on, come on, come on, come on. And thank you. I'm going to win in this thing. Hallelujah. I'm going to win. Come on, Samaj. I'm going to win in this thing. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. Look at, look at verse 4. We read through 1 through 3 in 1 Samuel. And the Bible says in verse 4, 1 Samuel chapter 1, uh, it says, And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. I want to put a pause right there. When I was reading this as we were riding in the car, and it's something because you can preach or teach or hear a message from a familiar passage of scripture, and then God can bring a new and fresh revelation. And it's something that just jumped out when he when the Bible says he gave a worthy portion to her. There was a value that was on her life that she didn't even see who she was. Her it had so clouded her judgment about who she was that she couldn't even see that she was getting more than what somebody else was getting. Isn't this something how the enemy tries to keep us is in a victimized mentality that she couldn't even see that she had money because she was looking at somebody shout her in. How many of us have missed what God wanted to do in our lives because our it, that thing kept blocking us, that it kept pulling us back, that it kept hindering us from seeing what God was really doing in her life. Sis had the bag, but her it was making her feel like she was broke. Sis had the, come on somebody, sis had notoriety, but her it was making her feel like she wasn't all that. You don't even realize who you are, but your enemy can see something you can't. And so all this talking and all this antagonizing, you know, that uh, Penina was doing, it was because she was jealous because she could see something that Hannah couldn't see. I'm just trying to get some people to throw their it's at this altar and say, I ain't picking up this stuff no more. I know who I am. Hallelujah. So the Bible goes on to say in verse... 6, 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 6, and her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord has shut up her womb. Look at verse 7, and as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. The first thing I want to talk to you about in dealing with your it is that you've got to get your strength back. Yes. To deal with your it, you have to get your strength back. I, I need y'all to see something. When Penina was constantly, Deacon Reginald, provoking her, it made her, the Bible says, she was just sore. I mean, like, greed within her spirit. I told you her, it was clouding her from who she was, but it was also causing her not to walk in the strength of God. 
Yeah. Have you ever been through something and you have lost your strength? Yeah. You say, I just, yeah. I put, come on, what, what's some things y'all say? I just don't have it. I just say, got it no more. I'm just tired. I'm just drained. In order to deal with your it, you have to get your strength back. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That means that I'm not depending on man. I'm not depending on a, a drummer or a keyboard player. God bless y'all. You know I love y'all. I'm not de depending on a worship leader. Come on, somebody. with her in that she had lost sitting in the presence of God and getting the strength. Can I just tell you, in order to deal with your you got to get your strength back, baby. you got to get in the presence of God. There's no substitution for being in his presence. Because when you're in his presence, as the word says, there's fullness of joy. That means even with your it riding on your back, you still have the joy of the Lord. People wonder sometimes, they say, are you just always happy? Are you always on a great winning day? Are you always winning? As long as I stay in the presence of God, then I can feel just what I'm saying. Because I'm determined my it is not going to take me out, Dr. Foster. My it is not going to take my strength. My it for a long time was grief. And I was fighting that thing every day. But the reason why I'm standing here today is because I was determined it couldn't win. Somebody just shout, God, give me my strength back. If you know that's for you, come on, stand on your feet for a moment and just declare that only if that's for you, you need your strength back. Hallelujah. I need my strength back, God. I need my strength to fight. Where's your strength? In the presence of God. You know why the enemy tries to keep us out of church? Because iron sharpens iron. And when we come into the presence of God, we are sharpened by our brothers and sisters. We feel encouraged. It was something about when I said, take a selfie with everybody. Take a selfie with somebody. All of a sudden, everybody just started smiling. They got excited. They got happy. Because you know, we ain't going to let you put us out there like that. I don't care if I'm not looking good or feeling good. If I know you're going to put me on social media, Jesus. Get your strength back. Yes. Stay in the presence of God. Let's go on and read. Let's go on and read. That's your first point right there. In order to deal with your it, you have to get your strength back. There's a kingdom mandate. I don't want you to forget this. There's a kingdom mandate that is on your life. A kingdom mandate is an official order or commission by God. The only reason Satan has risen up against the body of Christ is because we are under a kingdom mandate to win souls for Jesus. And you are assigned to execute the plans of God for your life. I want to show you how to stand in a place of continual victory. My husband testified about being in the hospital and not one time did I ever flinch and doubt what God said. I knew that I had to be there because sometimes when you are fighting for your own strength and fighting for your own life, you need somebody with some oil that's going to walk with you. Come on, somebody. You need somebody with some oil that's going to push you. I knew that I had the oil of God to fight that demon. And I told my husband when I prayed for him last night about it, I said, we're going not because we don't believe that prayer works, but we're going to find out what's the name of it. Yeah. Did I tell you that? Yeah. I said, when we find out when the doctors give us a name, then we know how to come against it. Yeah. Y'all got this. Yeah. So you got to deal with some stuff. And I ain't walking in the hospital like I was no victim. I ain't walking in the hospital holding my head down like that was going to be the last time. I said, no, it, I'm coming for you. I just need to know your name. Yeah. But I'm playing to be in the presence of God, to hear from God. God in a hospital here from God because sometimes your assignments where you at preachers sometimes your assignment will take you to places that your oil has assigned you to be because of the kingdom mandate there was a kingdom mandate and when there's a kingdom mandate on your life your plans are subjected to the plan of God tell your neighbor say neighbor just deal with it the challenge with most of us is that we don't deal with it. Yeah. See, your it is not because of what somebody did. Oh, 
Yeah. Your it is in you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you two more points, but I just want to show your it is in you. And I, at one point, I said, well, should I tell the intercessors to pray? God said, you got oil. Yeah. I said, well, should I call my mama and tell her? Because I know that fine. God said, you got oil. I said, well, so, should I tell Dr. Tiffany when she texted me that they were at Arlene's getting the group of things? And God said, you got the oil to deal with it. Sometimes we want to bring other people along when God has said, you're the one on our assignment to deal with it. It ain't got to be broadcast. I would have never said it had you not said it. It ain't got to be told, but when you're on an assignment and there's a kingdom mandate on your life, the oil of God will deal with your head and hand to go. That's why my husband could be here on today. When he was worshiping and when he was singing, come on, I knew that it had been defeated. So we walked out the house. We walked out the hospital about two hours before I was to walk in this church. Come on, somebody! And when I tell you that God is God from ten o'clock this morning, when I tell you that God is God, He is God. So when this man of God began to sing, while I was all I could do was just stand back here and worship because I said, "It, you had to go. It, you could not be a distraction." Tell your neighbor, say, "Deal with your, deal with your it." There's a kingdom mandate that is on your life. You have been conditioned. You have been on an assignment. You can't stop. You can't quit. You got to just deal with your it. You have the strength of God to deal with your it. Let's read a little bit more. I got to give you two points and get on out your way. The Bible says, did I leave off in verse 8 or verse verse 8? Uh -huh, I see it. First Samuel chapter 1 and verse 8. Then said Elkanah, um, her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? Why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? In order to deal with your it, you've got to get your value back. Yeah. Come on, come on. You've got to get your strength back, but you've got to get your value back. Now, I want to show you something because as I was reading this and I said, wow. Like Elkanah was the man, but he thought Samaj, he was so the man that her value was in him. That her value was in what he did. No, he valued her because of who she was and because, where y'all at sisters? And because of who she was, the value that was placed on her life, he sold at that level. Somebody missed that. Because of the value that was on her life, he sold into her life. Remember, the first time he sold Erica, he sold a double portion. And now he's sowing into her. He says, am I not better to you than ten sons? That means that what ten sons can give you, I have given you that answer because of the value that is on her life. So he sold for the value. Something about that Penina, she was having babies, but she wasn't getting seized like that. Can I just tell you, sisters, that there's a value, a high value that is on your life. And when you deal with your it, you will begin to take your value back. Somebody can ask me to do anything. I'm going to try it. Listen, there, there's no no in my book. That's why I don't let people around me sit. We don't, you know, folks get jealous when you ask somebody else to dance or you ask somebody else to preach or you ask somebody else to sing or you ask somebody else to do praise and worship or you ask somebody else to read the scriptures. It ain't about replacing nobody. It's about teaching them the value of what's on the inside of them. You can't stand that life at the point, Georgia. And I pull the babies to prophesy. I pull the babies to preach because I value the oil of God that is on their life. When you value the oil of God, you don't shrink. Come on, you can push your sisters and say, girl, you better sing that song. I don't know if you heard Dr. Tiffany when I said, I usually can't go past the hook, but I can't get like, give me you. I knew I needed some help after that. Come on, sister. But when Dr. Tiffany did, she said, you better sing, Bishop. And it made me feel like I can sing. I feel like everything. Come on, Pastor Zena, help me out. Come on, come on. Evangelist Katrina, I ain't got that voice. My God, did she bless us in leading worship? My God. Y'all know I want to hear my other song that just kept me at the altar that time, that Sunday. That Evangelist Ford sing. Yeah, we got to sing that one before we leave. Hallelujah. 
But when you value the oil that is on your life, listen, I need you to see something for a moment. Close your eyes real quick. Close your eyes. Am I good on my time, apostle? Close your eyes for a moment. Think about when you felt you were at your highest in life. Couldn't nothing knock you off your, your, your podium, your stage. Couldn't nothing knock you down. You felt like you were unstoppable. You felt like you had victory. Come on, just close your eyes for a moment. I know this is not no day session in the conference, and we do this kind of thing. But that's the blessing about being the foundation layer for the conference. Yeah. Now that you have closed your eyes and you see that place where you felt you was literally on top of the world, you can conquer anything. Let me ask you a question. Open your eyes. What moved you from that place? Who moved you from that place? What things in life attempted to derail you or, de or detour you that you forgot that moment. Wow. That moment. It was, it was a God. Like, really? Come on, come on. Talk to me. What happened? The divorce happened? The death happened? You lost your job? You lost your... Like, what really happened? What's your end? See, that it came just like Panaya to oppose you, to get you frightened and frightened. I mean, every time she opened her mouth, Hannah would just cracking down, crying, I mean, just breaking down, just, oh, Dr. T, I can't do it. Why? Because she said it. Oh, Hannah saw your life, excuse me, Panina saw your life, and she saw something, she, yeah, she was seeing the gifts and trinkets too. She was seeing everything. She was on an assignment to try to push something out of you. There are people that are on an assignment to push something out of you. God says, listen, you've got to find your value. Hallelujah. Start in your clothes. I, I purpose. I said, ain't no makeup tonight. I ain't preaching no makeup. Too hot in Florida. Come on, sister. Lashes and lipstick. That's my that's all I'm doing in this season. It's too hot to do all that. Because my value is not in clothes, it's not in makeup, it's not in my appearance. My value is in the oil of God that God placed on the inside. And if you're not so, if you're not careful, you'll get so caught up on the exterior and you'll be broken on the inside. Too many of us, we come to conferences to get fixed. God is not trying to fix you. He's trying to deliver you. And your deliverance comes on the inside out. Well, somebody just lay hands on themselves and say, it's the enemy in me. Outside you, it's the enemy in you. Find your value. Wow. Find your worth. Come on, preacher. And when you find your value and you find your worth, you don't compromise. Yes. You stay right there. Yeah. I have one of my spiritual daughters in Houston. She is a trip, boy. I tell you, I've got her coming for our uh, next women's fellowship dynasty. She was taking me to the airport one day. We were leaving Lifeline. Houston, and she was taking me to the airport. We were talking about dating, Rhonda. She's single. And she said, yeah, I don't date no man who, who can't afford to, um, she, she said, I don't date no man who can't afford me. If he can't afford me, he don't need, even need to talk to me. I said, well, how do you know if he can afford you? She said, because if he ain't sending me cash apps after we get off the phone. I said, girl, what? <laughs> she said, he can't afford me. And I couldn't even be mad. I was trying to get spiritual sins. I was trying to find something deep to say. You know, like trying to find some scripture on it. And, and the Holy Ghost had the quicker me and said, no, she just put a value. Yeah. I couldn't find one scripture, Dr. C. I'm trying to back this thing up, couldn't find it. And the Holy Ghost had to tell me, she put a value. Wow. Yeah. So you can't send her a cash app. <laughs> After getting off the phone, she said, because that's wasting my time. Wow. She's a businesswoman. She said, I got too much business and too much. Somebody, some single women say, I'm gonna do that. And I know what she understand. I'm not gonna be desperate just because you call me, just because you need me. It ain't about you need me, it's what you can somebody shout, it's what you can do for me. <laughs> well, y'all let single ladies y'all quiet up in here. And she has two kids. Just so y'all thought she just, you know, she must ain't got no children. She had two kids. Talking about. Putting a value. Maybe that's not your story. 
But don't put your story on layaway. Don't put your story on clearance. Don't put your story on the discount rack. Know who you are. Find your value. Elkanah gave her a double portion. Elkanah said, am I not better than ten sons? It ain't about who he was and what he can do. It was about what God wanted her to see. He's sowing into your life for the level of value that's on the inside. Let's read a few more scriptures. Somebody shall sis deal with it. The Bible goes on to say in verse 9 of 1 Samuel chapter 1. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. Y'all give me some time to read some scriptures right here. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Eli, somebody shout, Eli marked her mouth. Yeah. It's real important because for the third point, you're going to get it. Now, verse 13 says, Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice, somebody shout, her voice was not heard. Somebody shout, her voice was not heard. Tell your neighbor, say, her voice was not heard. She spoke this prayer in her heart, but not one time was her voice heard. Six. You gotta deal with it. Yes. Get your voice back. The enemy has muzzled some of you. You don't pray the same. You don't sing the same. You don't worship the same. You don't talk. Some of us have just subscribed to this is how life is going to be. But this is not the end of your story. Can I just prophesy to every person in the building and on the live stream? This is just a comma to your story. This is not the period. Sis, get your voice back. When Eli, the priest, saw her, he thought that she was drunk. Because she wasn't saying nothing. Her mouth was just moving. She was literally going through the motions, but not one time did she open her mouth where you could hear her voice. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Not yeah. one time. Yeah. What happened? She didn't deal with her end. My Lord. Remember that Benina took a strength. Yeah. She had to get her strength back. Yeah. Then after she, she put a, a, a lesser value on who she was, even though she was getting all the good she was being sold into, her life was looking good. Didn't have no wants and needs, just crying over the child. So she lost her value. Yeah, yeah. And in all of that, Apostle, she lost her voice. Yeah. I came right here for a few of y'all that have lost your voice. Yeah. You've lost the ability to even express how you feel. You forgot. Listen, she was talking to God and she wasn't even, sometimes when people look at this, they're just thinking she was so sorrowful she couldn't say it. No, she lost her voice. She had been in a self-inflicted fight of trauma. In other words, she put more value on what Penina said than what she knew who she was. So it was self-inflicted. I came for some self-inflicted trauma people. You saying what somebody else saying and not what God has said about you. Jesus. Who are you? Jesus. Who are you? Yes, You're not the sum total of the mistakes that you have made. You're not the sum total of a mother or father that walked out in your life. You're not the sum total of a boyfriend or a spouse or a relationship that didn't work out. Who are you? Can you just ask your brother and sister on the other side, say, who are you? Who are you? Somebody ought to answer and say, I'm a child of the most high God. I'm a kingdom boss. I've got a kingdom mandate on my life. I know who I am. I refuse to let the enemy muzzle me. I refuse to pack down. I refuse. Come on, somebody. 
See, people get upset when you walk in your God-given authority. And they begin, Pastor Foster, Dr. Foster, they start thinking that you're arrogant. It's not arrogant. It's confidence in the Lord your God. When you're confident in God, then you have a different stand. When you're confident in God, you have a different walk. Because you stand in a place of victory. I tell Lifeline Georgia, losing is not the option we choose. We're either going to win or we're going to win. Somebody in Margate party, we're either going to win or we're going to win. There's no other option. So in order to deal with it, you've got to get your voice back. What has the enemy silenced you? Wave your hand if you know some things you've been silenced for. Get your voice back. Open your mouth. Listen. And start saying what God says. I'm trying to help you. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I'm the lender. I might be renting today. I may be paying a mortgage today. But somebody say, I am the lender and not the borrower. Come on. If you may be struggling to pay bills. One day say, this is not the, my lot in life. I'm debt free. We can sell our bank account. We can sell people around us. But you got to consult the word of God. The Bible says, beloved, I would above all things that you be in health even as your soul prospers. Can I preach to about five millionaires in this room? I see a few hands went up. Struggling is not your portion. I'm talking to the millionaires. Struggling is not your portion. Living paycheck to paycheck is not your portion. Trying to figure out how you're going to make ends meet. That's not your portion. Can I get some people that's been struggling? I just want to prophesy and break the spirit of struggle. I hate struggling. I hate death. I want to prophesy. I break it off of your life in the name of Jesus. I command poverty to lose its hold. In the name of Jesus, I command wealth to be transferred into your life. You are on an assignment from God. You have a kingdom mandate. And there's no way that God is going to let you. Somebody open your mouth and say, there's no way God's going to let me struggle. Take your voice back. Anna had gotten to the place that she lost her voice and she started saying what God said. Because she was hearing what Penina said. But you take your voice back. There's a kingdom mandate on your life. And the reason God brought me from Georgia, because I don't live in Miami, amen. I don't live in Florida. My husband does. And we commute back and forth, but I still live in Georgia. And the reason God brought me here tonight is to tell you to deal with your it. Get your strength back. Get your value back. Get your voice back. When Hannah was at this place and she finally got her voice back, she said to Eli the priest when he thought she was drunk, she said, no, it's not me. I'm not drunk. For the first time in scripture, we are actually hearing her speak. Hallelujah. That's right. Come on now. Come on. And she says, I'm not drunk. She says, but I'm a sorrowful heart. I'm trying to help some she was stating the condition that her emotions was in. Can I get you to state the condition that God says you're in? Can I get you? Come on, open your mouth right now and begin to prophesy. You don't have low self-esteem. You don't have anxiety. You're not depressed. You're not oppressed. You're not old. You're not... Not gifted. Some people say, I don't have no gifts. Now, all these lies that the enemy has been whispering in your ear about who you are. God said, no, that's just your ear. Just deal with your it. Because it's not who you are. But she opened her mouth and she spoke. And she said who she was. And she told him the condition that she was in and what she had petitioned God for. And he told her that she was going to have a child. And she did have that child. And that child... When he was born, his name was Samuel. Somebody shout, there's a kingdom mandate on my life. And the reason the enemy was trying to take her strength, trying to devalue her, 
and trying to rob her of her voice because the prophetic voice that she released, when she released that prayer and then she told Eli who she was, it gave birth to the seed that was on the inside of her. Yeah. And all Eli the priest said was he affirmed that what she said. He affirmed what the prophetic voice in her said. She was just looking at herself as poor little Hannah. But God knew that there was a prophetic voice locked up on the inside. What did I call Pastor Azita up here to say? It wasn't because, you know, she could have sounded like Yolanda Adams. There's a prophetic sound that's on the inside of us. That when we sit on our gift, the enemy try to muzzle us. And when we get muzzled, we stop momentum. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody shot a kingdom mandate. When she stepped out in faith, whether she knew the song had the key or anything else, when she stepped out in faith and she began to sing, it unlocked. She defeated her it. The moment Hannah spoke, she defeated her it. There's a kingdom mandate. The thing about it, her son, Samuel, we all, some of y'all that Bible scholars, those that know the word, you know Samuel was bad all in itself. Yeah. But because of the kingdom mandate, Bishop, that was on the inside of her, God knew that this baby would be assigned to kings. Yeah. 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 This baby would be, a, listen, this baby would be assigned to kings that he would have the ear of the king. Y'all look at just the anointing of the king, but he had the ear of the king, which means that whatever Samuel was going to say, God backed up his word. So there was something on the inside of her that was going to shift nations, shift regions, but in order for Hannah to give birth, y'all know this is the birthing month, this is the ninth month, this is the birthing month, and in order for her to give birth, she was going to have to get her strength back. She was going to have to put a value on who she was. And she was going to have to get her voice back. Can I get somebody to stand in this building and begin to say, God, I understand. My kingdom mandate is bigger than me. God, I understand why the enemy tried so hard to hinder me and stop me so that I would never defeat my it. The enemy didn't want her to ever see. It was always standing in her way. It was standing in her way. Guess who her it was? Her. Too many preachers think it was tonight. If it was tonight. She would have went on and never got to pray. And Eli heard the pray. Just give me some strings if you don't mind, Sam. But her it was in her. I just want to pray in this altar. Just laying a foundation of us. I know it's some powerful women of God that's going to come behind me and build. But I wanted to lay a solid foundation of what your it looks like. If you get out your own way, stop talking yourself out of something. And stop looking at last season's victories. Listen, if somebody was to read my Bible, I'd get tired of hearing all that stuff after a while. It says last season's victories. Talk about 21 years ago. I got some new victories. In other words, we can get so hung up on the highs of all the accolades. Your it can stand in your way. We don't think that it of a high is saying. Some of us think we all that in. And some. God know how to keep us humble. But Hannah had to get out of her way. And if that's you on today, then you say, Bishop Marlin, I'm getting out of my own way. I'm taking my strength back. 
I'm taking my value back. Yes. So I did what somebody else says. Yes. See, the reason why I don't care what people think about me, because their words have no value in my life. Yes. <laughs> I dare somebody laugh at the devil right there. Yeah. <laughs> it really don't matter. Right. Somebody can think I'm the best thing since sliced bread, and somebody else can think I'm the worst thing since, you know, crummy the monster, right? right. right. Yeah, crummy the monster. <laughs> See, I ain't got no look at you. what God says. And he says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are his works unto me. And my soul doesn't know it. It's a bishop Marvin, that's me. I'm getting out my own way. I'm getting my voice back. I allowed myself to be muzzled in circles. I allowed myself to be muzzled because I'm looking at somebody else's lane. And that lane looks so good, Dr. Tiffany. When I stand behind the sacred desk, I don't try to be nobody but me. And I serve God in all five offices. And I yield to him and say, God, whatever office you want me to be in, if you want me to be the apostle tonight, I'll be in. If you want, y'all hold it for one second, just the strength. If you want me to be the teacher on tonight, I'll be in. Whatever you want me to do, God, that's what I'll do. Because you got your voice back. Meet me at this altar. Come on, if that's you. For sure. Only if it's you. You ain't got to move if it ain't you now. Let's say God. But if you know that's you and you say, Bishop Marlon, you came here tonight for me. I was standing in my own way. I was just like Hannah standing in my own way. I had lost myself. You know, we can lose ourselves in people. Lose ourselves in things. But you're getting here. Can you turn up just a little bit for me, Zach? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. I like loud music. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just worship for a moment. I'm going to lay hands because I'm going to pull you out of that place. But I just want you to talk to God because you know what your it has been. You know what your it has brought you to this altar. And you're not alone. I know there's a few more of y'all out there. I do. Even on the live stream, I need you to put some hearts up if you know that's you. And you know you've been standing in your own way. Sometimes you've got to break soul ties. We think soul ties is just a man and woman. No, you some of y'all are in some ungodly relationships with friends, female friends. Never get out of that mess. I surround myself with winners. I look at my circle, I'll be like, but let me tell you, I got some bad women in my circle. And when we sit around the table, we talk about winning. Pushing each other to win. Hallelujah. Just talk to God for a moment at this moment. You got to break it. To get to where God has for you. Hallelujah. Not one of you are going to leave this altar. The same way. No, I didn't hoop. I didn't scream. I didn't holler. I intentionally, Deacon Reginald, tried to stay in one tone because I wanted you to hear my words. I wanted you to hear the heart of the Father. He came for his daughters and his sons that are in here. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your winning daughters in this altar. Come on, make a vow to God like Hannah and say, God, I'm getting out of my own way. Chantel, when I hear you pray, I'm just like, my God, why is she not? I don't know, maybe you are on the intercessory team. I don't know, I just got here, hallelujah. But you are bad. See, I can hear oil. My ears are trained to hear oil. And Julie Chantel, you are bad. When I tell you, when you pray, you are in another realm. Some people go off of volume. Some people go off of words. But when you pray with just the peacefulness of God, you break strongholds. Your intercessor. And the reason why the fight oftentimes is what it is inside is because your panina, the enemy, 
that whispers lies really didn't want you to see who you are. It's in your voice. Come on at this altar. I'm going to lay hands on you, but I want you to get there for yourself. I want you to get there for yourself. I want you to get there for yourself. Hallelujah, God. Come on, come on. Open your mouth. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Father God, for the oil of release, the kingdom mandate in the name of Jesus that from this altar she'll never go back, oh God. She'll walk in that place of victory in the name of Jesus because she stands in the place of victory. And it is so. Stay right there. Stay right there. God is still talking to you. I just had to come and lay hands on you, she did. Shekana ma kuru masata. Yes, God. I stir up the gift <laughs> on the inside of you. Open your mouth, she did. Come on. Take the muscle off. I release the oil. Shekana ma kuru shata. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Take the muzzle off. Shake I need some intercessors praying. Come on. Come on. It got to move. Shake out. Come on. That's it. God said, take three steps. I know it's 
gonna be small because the steps right here. But take three steps forward. One, two, three. Shake out. You just stepped into it. Now you step out of your own way. Shake out of the Shake out. Shama Sataya. Fire her feet up. That the place that she's staying up. The new place that she stepped in, oh God, she'll never go back to God. In the name of Jesus, never go back to the old. Hallelujah. But she'll walk in the newness. What you have for God. Here go my shataya. He can't have a roll shaka. Stay right there. She can't have a roll shaka. Roll on my seat. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Get it out of the way. Get it out of the way. Rama Sata. Rama Sata. Rama Sata. Rama Sata. Rama Sata.
hallelujah. Come on, I know the hour. But if y'all don't mind just laboring in prayer so that God's daughters, they came to the conference again. What God had for them. Y'all don't mind laboring, amen. Listen, my spiritual daughters flew all the way in just for this, just to stand and undergird their sisters here in Florida. Hallelujah. They're jumping on a plane early tomorrow morning because they value the oil that was going to be released in this service. So if y'all don't mind just laboring in prayer just a little bit, give us just a little bit. Because if it was you, somebody said, if it was me, I would want somebody to just wait. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come here, our prophet and still is coming for a second. Shit, come on. Lucy, come on, stand up. Oil. Oil. Shit, I'm a horse. Horse, 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 I'm Yes, God. Y'all let us stay right there, Simone. Stay right there for a minute. You still on the upgrade table, baby. You ain't ready to come up. You ain't ready. Stay right there. Let us see what I see, God. Put your hand, evangelist, on my hand. Prophesy. It's a baby. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God. Yeah. 
something about you. <laughs> Evangelist, Lord, I want you to lay hands on open. I know Pastor Marcus might have to get the camera. We don't want to mess with his equipment, amen? Can't replace it, hallelujah. Our, our worship is our weapon, but we're going to do it in order now. Yes, Lord. Deacon Reginald, can you just move up? Evangelist, just move towards me. There you go. Come on, we're going to serve the flow. Oh, la la, shut up. Yes, God. We're leaving. We're leaving. Thank y'all for not walking out. Thank you for staying. Thank you for not disturbing the prophetic atmosphere. Thank you, men of God, back there. I see y'all praying. I see y'all holding it up. Thank you. Thank you for reverencing the presence of God. When the presence of God comes, we don't move. We just worship. Here come on, I'm a shot. I am a whole old city. Oh, I'm a shot. Zakia God said, let it go. Oh, shit, huh? It's a flushing. Oh, I'm a shot. It's a flushing. You don't even need to put them. Don't worry about the lashes. You're going to put some more lashes on tomorrow. Come on, let them flush you. Let them flush you. Come on, let them flush you. Shit, huh? Oh, shut up. He's getting everything off of you.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Listen, I need everybody who was standing with me on tonight. I know the prophetic is still being released. But I need everybody that will stand with me with a hundred dollar seed to come and get an envelope out of my hand on tonight. Amen. That's what you heard. Oh, well, see, that's what I heard. Amen. Thank you so much. Come on. I need everybody in the building to stand with me with a hundred dollar seed. Listen, for all the oil of God that was released, we can't pay God. Now, y'all heard them. They brought me from Georgia. So that means that they had to take care of some stuff to get me here. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Amen? Amen. And I'm thankful I was able to fly first class. They treated me real nice. Thank you so much, Apostle, for the hospitality in this ministry. And I came because I was up on an assignment under a kingdom mandate. Come on, sweetie. Come on. While I'm talking, come on. I just want y'all to come on and get that envelope. I can just talk while you're moving. Come on. We're sowing a $100 seed. We're going to make sure that we not only meet the budget, but we exceed the budget on tonight. And if you get an envelope and God say to do more, if you're in the live stream, I don't know which camera I'm looking at, but if you're in the, all right, they said this one. I know we're streaming. This is our normal Bible study in Georgia and in Florida. If you're streaming in Georgia, come on, you're sowing a hundred dollar seed. Please put it in the comment section. I believe somebody's watching it on the back end. Amen. And they'll let us know who you are. But I'm asking everybody, I need five more people to stand with me, a faith seed. I know it's a faith seed. And I know we said this Wednesday, you know, Bishop Marlon, I, I don't know, thank you, Apostle. Now, I know we're not gonna let the Apostle this house sow, and we not sow as well. Thank you so much. Did God do it for you? Come on, tell the Lord thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you, husband. Thank you so much, amen. Come on, I need, you getting two, all right, thank you. I, I, I want one more, I need one more, amen. Yes, she said, thank you. That's good? All right, thank you, sis. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, I, we're going to put it in a basket right here, if you don't mind. The ways of giving are here. Uh, if somebody can put it in the live stream and let them know the ways of giving, if you're giving cash app, is dollar sign S O H D M. And the Zell is 954 825 6626. Amen. If you need the card machine, we have the card machine available. Amen. It's in the back. Amen. The beautiful sister that's in the back with the black top on. If you need to swipe with your debit or credit card. What's your name, sister? Kedra. All right. Kedra has it. I don't like just to, I like to know people's name. Call you by your name. Amen. amen. Sister Kedra has it. If you need to swipe. Amen. We had one more envelope, a hundred dollar seed envelope. Will you please just release this out of my hand? Say, I'm sowing in faith. I know that some of you, I know it's a Wednesday night and you say, Bishop, we've got a whole week of services. But I'm telling you, there's oil that was released here, a foundation that was released for these preaching women that's going to come and tear this house up. Amen. Did we have anybody in the live stream? I don't know who's watching it for me to let me know. Amen. You see anybody in the live stream, husband, that's sowing? Amen. That $100 scene. Hallelujah. For those that are going to come as close to 100 and you say, Bishop Marlon, I, if I had it, I would do it, but I can sow and meet y'all at $50. Will you come and meet me at a $50 seed on tonight? Amen. You say, Bisha Marlon, I really desire. Thank you so much, Risha. I appreciate you. I know your heart. Amen. Sometimes our heart means to do one thing, but sometimes we just wait for God to bring the rest. I appreciate you, Dr. C. Thank you so much. Amen. A $50 seat. Can I get three more people to stand? Amen. That's one. All right. Can I get two more people to stand and say, Bishop Marlon, I'm going to stand with the $50 seat on tonight. Hallelujah. Can I get two more people to stand on tonight? We're sowing into good ground. We are sowing into good ground. No, Y'all have to look up. Amen. Thank you, Zakia. Can Prophet Silas, can you get that envelope? I want you to just rest right there. In the presence of God. I have one more envelope. Can I get one more person to say, Bishop Marlon, I'm standing with this $50 seed. I, I stand and I believe you for miracles. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Zena. Can we get that? Prophet Phyllis, can you want? Evangelist Nick, you got it. You're already in motion. All right, you'll take that to Pastor Zena. Amen. Now listen, if you, I didn't call your number because I'm not one of the preachers. Go all the way down, $5.39. I'm asking, come as close to 50 as you can and come and get an envelope. Even put a seed in the baby's hands so that they can give. Put a seed in their hands so that they can give. This baby already walking. Amen. 
I need everybody. He said, Bishop, I'm coming. I'm standing. Amen. I'm standing with my faith seed. Whatever your faith seed is. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, that's between. I just want you to come as close to 50 as you can. It might be 49.99. Amen. But I need you to come as close as you can. Thank you so much. Amen. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Evangelist, would you do you mind taking this back there to one of the sisters? Amen. All right. Thank you. I have one more envelope. Somebody's coming as close as you can to it on tonight. Amen. Thank you, Erica. Amen. Thank you for the women's ministry team at Life at the Point. Hallelujah. Georgia, Miami. Thank you. Hallelujah for coming, packing it out, wearing your sis, I see your t-shirts. I appreciate you. Amen. Has everybody had an envelope? When you're finished, again, the ways of giving are right here on the screen. When you are finished, come on, put your offering in the basket. I want to release the blessings of God over it. I want to see you walk into everything that God has for you. The greatest win in your life. My God. Father, thank you for the kingdom mandate. Thank you for the assignment. Thank you that we dealt with it. We're leaving it. We're not taking it back into that car. Listen, I don't want nobody trying to leave here gossiping. We ain't worried about this one. Listen, it is gone. It is gone. We focus now on purpose. We're focused now on the kingdom mandate. You hear me, prophetess? The kingdom mandate. And you're going to come out of that place of being in the cut. It's too much oil on your life for you to stay in the cut. You're comfortable there. You know, we don't even, what is comfortable? What is, comfortable is an adversary to radical. You've got too much oil. God said, come out of that comfort zone that you're in. It ain't just life coach. You're a prophet. Hallelujah. Has everybody given on tonight? Amen. Has everybody given on tonight? You've given, wave your hand and say, yes, Lord. My soul says yes. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I know some are still coming. In the live stream, our prayers that you were sowing and the ways that you could give. I'll say it again if it's not in the comment section. The cash app is dollar sign S O H D M. And the Zelle is 954 825 6626. And again, if you're in the building and you need to swipe or use the giving machine, you can see our sister in the back. Thank you for sowing in faith. Hallelujah. Pastor Zena, can you do me a favor? Hold the basket right here up for a second. I want to release a prophetic blessing because I don't take for granted when people sow into a ministry, whatever I lift an offering. I know sometimes people are sowing what appears. Somebody say it's an appearance that it's my last, but it's not. So I just so much glory on you. When I tell you, you weren't even ready to come up when you came up. God had you on the operating team for a reason. Ha, oh my shot. Evangelist, can you come and hold this side? Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes, Lord. I want you to ask God for a hard thing. For the seed that you see. Because what's impossible with man is possible with God. Dr. Foster, you sitting back there in the cut. You another one in the cut. Eko marama sata yalama kuroshika Orama sikaya Ramaka yalama kuroshike Roseke yalama kuroshikaya Orama shata yalama kuroshike I'm coming through the walls, Dr. Fawcett Shika Orama sata Hikanama kuroshike Reke roshikaya Roshaka Roshata yalama kuroshikaya Roshika yalama kuroshika Zakia, do you mind shifting to the front row? I need somebody. I need another prophet to sit right there. Come on, prophetess Russell. I need you to sit. She needs to sit between two prophets. 
You've been carrying your baby so much. You didn't ask God for nothing for you. Hey, come. He said, I've answered your prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. There's another sound, Dr. Foster. trying to muzzle you too. Because you've been crying out for your baby. Here come. But we come through the walls now. Come on, Glenda. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get your warfare clothes back on. Unto you. 
Some God sold a sacrificial seed, but we know that you surround yourself around the sacrifice. You said, give and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, press down, shaken together, and running over, do men give into our bosom. I declare by the Spirit of God, because I am a prophet of God, I thank you that the seed that has left our hands, it will never leave our life. Within the next seven days, this seed will boomerang, and it will hit our hands, and it will be multiplied. And you will remind the people of God of this day, Father, because they are on a kingdom mandate assignment, God. You will see fit to manifest it back in Jesus' name. Can we just hear God a praise break right here as so I turn it over?